was born and raised in Las Vegas. All my life I've lived here. I was out there by Story Lake and was, of course we was born at home. And, uh, we didn't have electricity or running water. Or, we finally got us an ice box. We didn't have refrigerator, but it's put those blocks of ice in it. And that's what we used to cool our food down it. We had mostly beans to eat. My grandmother had a big garden every year. We worked in the garden in the summer, and, and Mama and Granny would sew our clothes for school. We'd each just have two or three different outfits that they made us for school. We had one pair of shoes that had to last us whole year. I was born in 1930, so this here was in 1940, I guess, because I was about 10 years old when I remember them making the clothes and, and, and stuff. That's during the World War, and we had to have coupons to buy sugar and stuff with her. That was very scarce. Levi's were very scarce. You couldn't buy Levi's. We had to use Carol's syrup for our sugar. I had two sisters and two brothers. And my baby brother, when Mama was sick, she had no way to take care of him. All the other kids was in school. I had to take him to school with me. And I had, I had to take care of Bobby a lot. So he was kind of my kid. <laughs> we got by and we uh, very, very seldom had any treats, but we did have milk because we had a dairy and had to learn to milk cows and, and get up four o'clock in the morning and do our chores and stuff and then we go to school and then come home and clean chimney lamps and chop wood and then when I was 14 I got a job at the Harvey house. I was a Harvey girl from the Castaneda. That was a total different life for me and I enjoyed it awesome. so much. They had, uh, had rooms for us to stay down there so I didn't live at home and I the money I bought, I was able to buy me some clothes once in a while. And if I wanted a cantaloupe to eat, I could eat a cantaloupe. Mama made me quit the job and come home because she needed my help at home. And because uh, she was sick a lot. And uh, a lot of times when she was sick, the neighbors would come and help out. Neighbors, would, neighbors were very good about coming and going. And in those days, you didn't have anybody robbed your house. You never, we never locked up the car. They didn't lock the house. We, anybody could come and go and, and they were very honest. Even the helpers that Granny had working for. We had a lot of, a lot of neighbors right, right along right there close where we lived which was relatives really. And then, then there was neighbors beyond that. There wasn't a whole lot of neighbors but we had some Hispanic neighbors, and, and uh, it was all mixed up. Everybody got along fine. We didn't have any family quarrels about anything. Well, I think it's more of a community-wide culture, because a lot of them did bump heads, and, and uh, I don't know where they learn it, because uh, we didn't. My dad was half Spanish. And uh, he spoke Spanish fluently, mm. but my mother wouldn't let us learn Spanish. Mm. She was one that kind of butted heads against. Wow. But she wouldn't let. She didn't want us kids talking Spanish. I really regret it today. Shortly after I left the Harvey house, I, I was 16 and I got married. And I went to school for a little while, and and uh, then I quit school, and I never got through high school. And then, because Paul had a job up at a shoemaker, working on a ranch, and we had this little bitty old house to live in, no water, no gas, no nothing in it, and I washed on washboards, and I didn't. It didn't bother me at all. I never gave it a second thought. That was just natural because I was raised that way, doing laundry on a washboard. We had to move to town when Patricia started the school. And uh, it was 
they liked it. They never did complain about anything like that. They uh, always wanted a little more candy to eat that we didn't have, but I'd make it sometimes for them. And, uh, but we had a very good life on there we, without all that stuff. We had a radio that we hooked up to a battery, and that was the only outside communication we had in the 50s. And uh, then we, we moved up to after the kids all left and they got married, then we Paul got to work at El Porvenir and we had to, where we had everything there. And it just didn't seem like it was important to us when they, we were growing up or when I was married, to have all that stuff. Because uh, Paul and my mother both said love was the best thing that you could have. Give them. As long as you had something to eat and plenty of love and a little entertainment, you had a good life. But I wished things wasn't so easy now for the children because I don't think it's healthy for them to have everything they want and go everywhere they want while they're young. They, they need to have some responsibility. And you could pick out the, nowadays you could pick out the ones that have responsibilities and the ones that don't have responsibilities. And the ones that have responsibility, they're happier. If you look around and you could look at the ones that have responsibility, they're much happier than the ch children that don't have anything to do. They could just roam the streets. And they're not happy. They're just looking for something to do. I think country life is a whole lot better for the kids. I think they get a better outlook on life on, in the country. My grandson, the Cody's boys, they live up in Buena Vista at the ranch and they go to work with Cody and help him, they're only 11 and 13, but they've been working with him for a long time. And you ask them what they, what they really like to do. They said, the best thing in life is to work, go to work with my daddy. That's what I'd rather do. And they asked him if he didn't want to live in town. He said, no, because the kids in town, they don't understand the, the, the meaning of work. <laughs> and so I think Ranch life is very good for them. I think 4-H is another thing that teaches children a lot. And uh, they get very responsible. Yeah, we were treated as, as a woman fine. They, they respected us. And the guys would open the car doors for us. And, and we had a lot of respect from the men, which is different now, which I wish we could go back to the old days. And, and I don't regret Growing up poor at all, I think I learned a lot in being poor when I was married and when I was growing up. The hardest time in my life that I, I've had was after my husband died. He, he died, we'd been married 59 years when he passed away. And my health just went to pots. I fell and broke my hip. And then my heart went haywire and I had to have a heart surgery. This time is the hardest time in my whole life. So the puzzle, I work on puzzles, that's all I can do. The doctor won't let me do anything else. And uh, I do the puzzles to keep my hands and my mind going. And I like the hard ones. Now, <laughs> we've done some hard, hard ones. And um, I, I'm just doing the puzzles to and gluing them and making pictures out of them to give to my great grandkids and my grandkids to keep so they'll have a keepsake for me. And it means more to me doing the puzzles. But I know I'm doing it for my kids. My kids, my family means the world to me. Thank you.